I have to tell you that on Monday morning, I had my talk set. I knew what I was going to do. By Monday afternoon, I knew I wasn't going to give that talk. I was going this direction. So I follow the direction that's been given. And part of what created that for me was finding this wonderful passage. It's written by Khalil Gibran, uh, one of American Lebanese writer. Uh, his book, The Prophet, is one of the best-selling books of all time. Um, and he has this writing called Fear. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled from the peaks of the mountains. The long winding road crosses forests and villages. In front of her, she sees the ocean so vast that to enter there seems nothing more than to disappear forever. But there's no other way. The river cannot go back. No one can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean. Because then, because only then, will the fear disappear. Because that's where the river will know that it's not disappearing in the ocean. It's becoming the ocean. And I have a wonderful spiritual guide called Owen, my husband. <laughs> and when I took this direction, what I wanted to do is call this trusting chaos. And he said, you can't say chaos in church. <laughs> and he pulls out the dictionary and he gives me the definitions of chaos. And pr see, proof, proof. So I softened it, embracing change. <laughs> it's the middle of September. We're still in divine order. And so I turn to the real reason why I changed my topic. It's this quote by Carolyn Mace. Now, she's an author of many books. She's New York Times bestseller author, and her wisdom has helped many. And here she says, the moment you come to trust chaos, you see God clearly. Chaos is divine order versus human order. Change is divine order versus human order. When the chaos becomes safety to you, then you know you're seeing God clearly. I love this because it shakes up my automatic pilot. The governor that just, you know, I just kind of going on routinely, it shakes that to a core because I get really attached to my way. I get really attached to how I want to do things. Now, in the 30 years I've been with Owen, I've had to relinquish some of that because he's not willing to play along with my way all the time. We're still together, so he does do it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, enough of that. Human order is the order that we fixate on to have some control, thinking that that is going to give us safety. That's going to give us grounding. That's going to give us what we want. But we've discovered over and over again 
that that way is limited. That way begins in time and ends in time. That way is making a decision often out of fear. That's often a place where I'm holding on to something so tightly, I've forgotten I'm still holding on to it because it's fixed to me. Change is the only constant. And some of that change looks like chaos. The chaos of unlimited potential. The chaos that anything can be fulfilled or nothing can be fulfilled. The void. It's all mixed together. And when we can find safety... When we can find, okay, I can be with this. I don't have to know everything that's going to happen next. I have what I have here right now, and with that, I can step into divine order. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm going to also turn to another goddess of wisdom. We have watched Oprah Winfrey grow up before our eyes. And as we grow, we gain wisdom. And certainly Oprah has given much wisdom. She says here, nothing about my life is lucky. Nothing. A lot of grace, a lot of blessings, a lot of divine order, but I don't believe in luck. For me, luck is preparation meeting the moment of opportunity. There's no luck without being prepared to handle that moment of opportunity. Every single thing that has ever happened in your life is preparing you for the moment that is come. This is profound wisdom. For when we let go of calling something luck when it is all that we have right now. And what comes to in the present moment is divine order. Now, it might look like luck, but that's the providence of what's already for us. So it's ours to stand in the truth of being and be present. And then everything that's happened before us, everything, all of our past, all of our experiences, all the relationships, all the failures, all the successes are all the things that are there here now. And it's not luck. Because luck is just all of that meeting this moment. Right now. And sometimes the opportunity that is available right here looks really good. Sometimes it doesn't look so good. Sometimes it doesn't feel so good. She goes on to say, I've always believed free will is a birthright. God even allows us to choose whether to be led by divine order. I love this. We already know that we're given the free will to choose. We can go this way, we can go that way. We can have this, we can have that. We can let go of this, we can pick up that. Free will. And that means God doesn't care whether we choose divine order or not. We can choose my way or your way or your way, or your way, or your way. Or we can do divine order. When we are one with the order that is ours, because my order doesn't look like your order. 
Because God's working through, the reason God's working through each of us is because each of us have a unique journey. And it doesn't all look the same. But we have the, the right, the birthright to choose. Do you want the blue one or the red one? Do you want to go to the store or do you not want to go to the store? Do you want to be whole and free? Do you want to be constricted? It's all our choice. Thank you, Oprah. Mehmet Marat Ildan is a contemporary writer, novelist, playwright in Turkey, and I love his fresh approach. He says here, look at the universe. What do you see? An order? Tranquility? A divine peace? You fool? You ignorant? Over there, galaxies are colliding. Suns are exploding. Black holes swallowing stars. Now look at the universe again. What do you see? A disorder? A chaos? Anything savage? You see a hell. Now you see the truth. Because in chaos... All is possible. It's the first step of creation. And within the entire universe, all things working in this amazing balance of working together. Sometimes there's discordant harmony. Sometimes galaxies collide. There's a huge meteorite that hit planet Earth a little while ago, 12 miles into the Earth, a 100-mile wide hole, and it obliterated all the dinosaurs. Left the cockroaches, but all the dinosaurs died. Things happen. Things collide. It's going to be these edges, these changes, where something new can happen. That's why not every relationship is going to last forever. Relationships begin and end. We're not always going to be sweet 16. Sometimes we get to try on sweet 70. Or sometimes we get to try on a new relationship or wear something a little different. Maybe make your hair go up rather than down. It's all possible in the realm of the universe and our ability to choose what do we want? What's true right now in my life? What am I willing to let go of so that I can have this? I'm not going to carry everything I've ever had in my life with me all the time anymore. There was a time when I held on to everything. No more. I love throwing stuff at. Ask Linda. I love getting rid of stuff. If it sits more than 24 hours, it's ready to go. So don't stay here overnight. (laughs) So I'm so glad you deal with my humor. Okay, Dr. Wayne Dyer was a member of our church at Unity Church of Maui. And what a great man. And while he was there, while I had met him, he was um, doing his dance with cancer. And he wrote the wonderful book about the Tao, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And he says here, let the world unfold without always attempting to figure it all out. Let relationships just be. 
Since everything is going to stretch out in divine order, don't try so hard to make something work. Simply allow. Don't always toil at trying to understand your mate, your children, your parents, your boss, or anyone else. Because the Tao is working at all times. You know, enough is enough. It's, it's enough to have enough understanding that we can ac- accept each other and discern, but we don't have to understand it all. It's not even possible. In my relationship with Owen, one of the greatest things we have is that we see the world completely differently. One of the greatest challenges in our relationship is he sees the world completely differently than I do. (laughs) And he can't even for a second see it my way. How important is it? We need to let go of this need to understand it all because we're not going to get all the puzzle pieces. And there's nothing more frustrating than having the, opening the box and making the puzzle and you don't have all the pieces. We're given this. We get to bring all that we've experienced to this moment and be connected with our truth. And within that, there's much available to us. We need to embrace change. It's going to happen anyway. And we don't even have to understand what the change is. But we need to embrace it. We need to find safety in the chaos. Catherine Ponder is a very powerful unity minister. She's still living And she has written many books on prosperity that have touched our hearts. She says here, I now let go of worn out things, worn out conditions, worn out relationships. Divine order is now established and maintained in me and in my world. So it's come to this. We've come to this place to be. To be here now. And part of the being here now is we can let go of the stuff that doesn't serve us anymore. Sometimes that's a relationship or a job or stuff that's pushing its way out of the closet. But as we let go of some of this baggage, we're more free. We have a little more space to be available for new opportunity. Have you ever noticed that when we have enough space, through some unexpectedly, we get asked if we want to participate in some in some way, or to help out in some way, or to contribute in some way, or to be a part of in some way? There's no lack in God. And every opportunity is just bringing us to what we need to do what is ours to do now. And it's a good idea to let go of some stuff. I am concluding my talk today with this wonderful poem, which I I read daily. Uh, It's St. Teresa of Avia. It's called Let Nothing Upset You. I've uh, inserted it into the bulletin so you can take it with you in case you're not familiar with it. It says, Let nothing upset you. Let nothing frighten you. Everything is changing. God alone is changeless. Patience attains the goal. Who has God 
lacks nothing. God alone fills every need. Amen. So the, let's let these words guide us into our meditation of letting nothing upset us as the Unity singers bring us to this now moment in song. in that who has God lacks nothing. 
for God fills every need. In this now moment, we come to this place in our center where we open to this grace. Let's allow ourselves to drink in divine order and be here now in the silence. With gratitude, we accept our deepening knowing of this oneness. And we bring the fruit of this meditation time into our day. And we allow peace and love and light to be our guide. So as we breathe deeply, we choose to come back into this room. We might wiggle our fingers or wiggle our toes, roll our shoulders or roll our head. And when we're ready, will say this affirmation from today together. In the present moment, everything in my life is provided by divine order. This is a blessing, isn't it? For as we allow this truth to more reveal for us, there's so much possible out of the chaos. on the water